So here we've got an animation of the orthographic view of the hydrostatic sunstrand single path closed loop hydrostatic drive systems. We've got our hydrostatic drive pump at the left, our hydrostatic drive motor at the right, and of course we've got our two lines connecting the motor to the pump to create our closed loop circuit. We've also got our charge pump here in the center and a filter on the suction side, which again tells me this is an industrial unit, not mobile hydraulics, where we'd be outside in cold weather, because you don't want to pull through a filter on the suction side of a, a pump for mobile systems. So in neutral here, the charge pump is going to push oil in to both sides of the drive loop. Both charge check valves here will open, charge pump flow will go in and charge up the drive loops, and the charge relief valve here at the pump, at the charge pump specifically in this system, will dictate what that pressure is. So this is our neutral charge relief or our charge relief that's going to control charge pressure in neutral. And again both check valves would, would be opening. These are our charge check valves, sometimes called replenishing check valves because they're fed by the charge pump, sometimes called the replenishing pump. And it's this charge pressure that also goes up to our servo control valve, which in this case is mounted at the pump, but it could also be it could also be a remote pilot control somewhere in the cab, a distant location away that's feeding back to these servo cylinders. But what's happened here is the operator has moved the, uh, the servo control into forward. What that's done is uh, send higher pressure to the bottom servo, draining the top servo or lowering the pressure in the top servo, creating a pressure imbalance at the swash plate. And that's what's going to tip our swash plate over to give us uh, control into forward and have the hydrostatic pump start pumping oil in the closed loop. So in neutral again, charge pressure is controlled by the charge relief. Once we go into forward here, and they're, in this animation they're going to use the top side of the drive loop to indicate that's, that's where oil is flowing in forward. Uh, just changing it up a little bit, but that's fine. And of course what's happened is the top charge check valve has shut because we have high pressure now as the swash plate tips in the pump. Oil is traveling from the pump to the motor and the top check valve is closed. The bottom check valve, however, is still open and we're still feeding charge pressure into the reverse side of the loop. So even though they're going to show the dots traveling from the, the motor to the pump, we're also adding oil there as necessary from the charge system into the low side of the loop, which in this case would be the bottom side of the loop and forward or the reverse side of the drive loop, if you want to think of it that way. The reason, again, we need to replenish the loop and put oil in on the low pressure side is because we've got case drain at both the motor and the pump. We have uh, case flow coming out of the motor, traveling into the case of the pump, and then out the case drain line from the pump. It should be on the top, but they've drawn it on the bottom through a, a potentially a cooler, and then back to the reservoir, and that's what the charge pump is going to put back into the system. So right now it's putting it in. Orange is going to blue because they're pushing it into the low side of the loop. What's going to control charge pressure in the drive loop here in the blue side is not the charge relief at the pump. Now it's going to be the flushing relief or the operating charge relief. So again, John Deere and some other manufacturers call this charge relief the neutral charge relief because it controls charge pressure in neutral. They'll call the flushing relief the operating charge relief because it controls charge pressure in forward and reverse when you're operating either direction. And of course, that's because we've got high pressure on one side of the drive loop. That's going to shift the flushing shuttle valve over, and that's what's going to then index low pressure drive side oil to that relief. And because oil takes a path least resistance, and this relief valve set at a little lower pressure than this relief valve, this inherently now starts controlling our charge pressure. Not the neutral charge relief, but the flushing relief or operating charge relief, which is generally set 10 or 20 psi lower than the neutral charge relief. And of course that's dumping the oil into the motor case, going out the case drain line to the pump case, back to the reservoir. The charge pump's going to pick it up and keep putting it back in at pressure. So your textbook actually covers some variations as well on how the servo control of that sun strand pump can be fixed, uh, can be positioned on a machine. 
and not only not only can you have a cable and a servo control spool valve operated right at the pump you can have the servo control valve rem remotely controlled from a typical pilot joystick inside the cab of a machine that's some distance away from the pump so it doesn't have to be linkage or a cable like our machine in the main shop it can be remote hydraulic control or an hrc like this that's going to control a servo control valve on the pump which is then going to in, in turn move a spool back and forth that's going to control the pressures to the two servo pistons that are going to actuate the swash plate so this can be moved far away and on some pumps the, the pilot or servo control may come directly to the servo pistons on the pump this one has that mechanical feedback linkage still which is a very typical sunstrand uh, design feature of their pumps there's generally always this sort of three point fulcrum linkage inside their pumps that uh, provides mechanical feedback so as the yoke of the swash plate actually moves the linkage is going to recenter or re-zero out the uh, control spool to give us better proportional control of the, of the uh, swash plate ultimately and then textbook also goes on to uh, discuss an electronic version of that where we've got uh, solenoids uh, operating uh, to control pressure at the servo valve proportional solenoids from an electronic joystick in the cab or some type of electronic transmission control or hydrostatic drive control that's going to uh, proportion oil to a servo valve and then the servo valve again is going to control the pressure to the two servo cylinders that actuate the swash plate and they're still using sunstrand still likes to use that mechanical feedback linkage from the yoke and in this case they're they're hooking it up to a couple of uh, centering springs or a feedback and bias spring that are going to uh, affect the position so we've got springs and swash plate linkage versus uh, servo uh, pressure or servo um, electronic magnetism that's going to ultimately control what they call a flapper valve in here that's going to move the servo valve back and forth and control the servo pressures so that's a little bit manufacturer specific to sunstrand but ultimately uh, all manufacturers of hydrostatic drive pumps are going to have an electronic version where a uh, solenoid is going to control pilot pressure to a either two single acting servo cylinders or one double acting servo cylinder that's going to move the swash plate and in all cases um, with the servo control there's going to be some type of lock nut and adjustment system here to neutral to to effectively null or neutralize the pump uh, what can happen as the linkage wears or if the pump isn't set up right from the start uh, you can start up a hydrostatic unit that's supposed to be a neutral and it'll either be trying to creep forward or trying to creep in reverse because the swash plate isn't sitting perfectly horizontal as it should be to create no stroke of the piston so if you've got a hydrostatic drive system that's trying to drive in neutral it may be a case of doing some linkage adjustment uh, either the mechanical linkage coming to this point on the pump group or a neutraling or nulling procedure that will be covered in detail in a service manual for the actual spool that's going to control the pressures to the two servo cylinders on the pump and generally a procedure like that is done with a lot of safety steps in mind either the machine is going to be up on stands um, so the wheels can turn freely which is and they may have you remove the wheels from something like a skid steer so to reduce the uh, potential for injury or they may do it with the brakes locked on and as you're trying to drive forward or reverse you're simply trying to drive against a, a locked parking brake and uh, or watching pressures in the forward and drive uh, forward and reverse uh, sides of the drive loop to determine whether or not the uh, swash plate is physically in neutral but that's uh, OEM specific how that adjustment would be done on individual machines it may be through electronic calibration it may through, be through external linkage adjustments it may be through adjustments of a lock nut and, and servo control uh, adjustments there may also be more uh, neutral or nulling uh, adjustments on the pump uh, or some combination of uh, some or all of those steps getting the swash plate properly in neutral is uh, is a big um, maintenance item and, and a, a important troubleshooting step for any machine that has a dual path hydrostatic drive system where left and right sides of the machine are driven independently 
we need those two swash plates to swash together or the machine isn't going to track straight. When you go forward, you need both pumps to be stroking forward at the same time and at the same rate and to the same position ultimately with whatever type of control is on the machine. And same with reverse. So if you get a machine that doesn't have the neutral point of the swash plates adjusted specifically the same left to right, then the machine when you go forward might want to track to the left, might want to track to the right, uh, it might want to take off with a hook one way or the other. Um, so and it might want to go one way and forward and the opposite way in reverse, which could be an indication that one of your swash plates is not in the neutral position.